generic. But anyway. And I don't really know why this wasn't the first one when you think of it, because this would have made more sense to use for the other one. But anyway, find the horizontal and vertical components of a 100-meter displacement of a superhero who flies from the top of a tall building, as shown below. This one just wants you to find the X and the Y components of our superhero is all it's after in this problem. So let's see what we can't figure out about our good superhero here. Sorry, I got like some sunlight tripping through the window behind me, so I'm trying to block that as best I can. All right. So we'll start out. And we've got a superhero, and here's what he's doing. He travels 100 meters. He travels 100 meters at an angle of, oh, 30 degrees. Wasn't that so sweet of these people? So this thing has got two components. It's got the X component, and we've also got a Y component. And that's what we're looking for in this problem. If you want to find the X component, so I'll call this vector, I'll call it vector A, just to give it a name. So the AX component would be 100 cosine of 30, and the AY component would be 100 sine of 30. Sine of 30 is a half, half of 100. We have 50 for our Y component. Put a meter on just so it looks better. Cosine of 30 is 0.866 times 100 would be 86.6 meters in that direction. Again, uh, this would have made more sense to have for a first problem, but oh well. We'll take it and use it for this second problem anyway. All right, I'm going to do two more examples, both of which are kind of lengthy. All right, this next problem I think is an actual, check it out just so you know where we kind of got our words from. This first example actually says in the problem, it says hiker. So a hiker begins a trip by walking 25 kilometers, 45 degrees south of east, second day, 40 kilometers, 60 degrees north of east, when she discovers a ranger tower. So this problem has two vectors in it. I'm just gonna start in the center because I don't know where this problem's going. And I usually write smaller, that's what's kind of weird. I'm trying to write a little bit bigger for the camera. So day number one is 25 at 45 degrees south of east. So I need to kind of pull my paper this way. So I'm going to walk 25 kilometers at a 45 degree south of east angle. So now, I'm going to get down to here. I'm going to put me a little set of crosshairs so I have a beginning for the second day. Sixty day, second day she walks 40 kilometers, 60 degrees north of east. So second day, didn't hardly draw my angle good enough. So 40 kilometers, an angle of 60 degrees. Good thing about the way we're doing it, we don't have to use a protractor or anything. All I'm interested in is the numbers. My drawing is definitely not the scale. Even got a little whoop in my 40 over here. So, and I left my units off just so I wouldn't clutter my pictures up. But the big thing we're looking at is the fact that we've got two vectors. This 25 and this 40 vector over here. So let's see what we can't figure out here. From this picture, we can go ahead. If you get good, you can get to where you don't even have to draw these pictures. You could just read it and do a sum of the X and a sum of the Y. But let's go ahead and do a sum of the X. So, first vector, it has an X and Y component. So it's got a positive X component because this X is traveling this way. So we'll write positive. You wouldn't have to write positive. I'm just going to. The first vector has a positive 
25 cosine 45 x component. The second vector also has a positive x component. And so we're going to write plus 40 cosine 60 equals on that, which cosine of 60 is a half, so that actually made that easy. Well, cosine 45 is 0 0.707, but anyway, kind of gave us some easier numbers. Sum of the y's would be equal to. This first vector has a negative y component because if you take a look, it's actually coming down in orientation. So first one's going to have a negative 25 sine 45 component. Second vector, however, has a positive y component. So I'm going to write plus 40 sine of 60. Now let's plug all this in the calculator and see what we get. So first vector, 25 cosine 45 plus 40 cosine 60 equals 37.7. For our first vector. Next one, we've got negative 25 sine 45 plus 40 sine 60 is 16.9. So my drawing wasn't too bad because if you take a look, I actually did come out a little above up here, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to draw a final picture anyway. So these coordinates are going to give me a final location for this resultant. So my final location is 37.7 this way and 16.9 up. So I'm going to sit here and draw my arrow for there's my resultant. And that's what it asks. Well, actually, I didn't really read the problem. Part A said to determine the components for the first and second day. So this is actually my answer for part A up here. Let's see. Part B says determine the total displacement. OK, excuse me. This is part B. Part A wanted you to go through and actually figure out what each of these values were. Well, I just went ahead and plugged it all in at once. So I'm actually skipping all the way to Part C here, really. So Part C is really asking find this R and ask this theta. So all I have to do is plug in some numbers. R would be square would be equal to 37.7 square plus 16.9 square. 37.7 square plus 16.9 square. Square root, an answer. 41.3. And I think the units in this one were kilometers. This theta would be equal to tan negative 1, opposite being 16.9 over 37.7. Looks like we're going to have a shift, oops, shift, tangent, 16.9 divided by 37.7, 24 degree angle. So final answer would be for her would be to say we've got a 41.3 kilometer displacement at 24 degrees north of an east line. Or you could also write a positive y off of a positive x axis. You'll see it written in different books in different ways, but anyway. Hopefully this kind of gets you a start now. I'm going to do one other problem. I'm going to make a separate video. We'll call it the dog napper. It's a problem I think if you can work and if you don't have it, you can even Google the dog napper question. 
and pull it up. It's just a really good hiker in the woods type question. And the foundations of all this, we're going to eventually use this method to solve all force vectors and all electro, uh, electric field vectors and all kinds of stuff we'll solve doing this. Anyway, good luck. Give you a little smiley face, a little crazy smiley face, a little tongue, some ears, some crazy hair up here in the center. Uh, let's give them like some freckles. Crazy eyebrow. Woo! Yeah, this guy's a party in machine. You know? Let's give him some in their ear. Uh, you can probably turn this video off whenever you want. I'm really done. I'm just uh, playing around at this point. Let's uh, give him a name yeah, yeah. Maybe give him a nice. No, he needs a collar. This guy, this guy is definitely making a collar. Maybe I will tie. Button up, nice pocket protector. Ah, yeah, there it is. Let me get the ink in there. Yep, okay, pretty much done.